So I'm, I go by the name of Klimps. You can follow me on Twitter at Klimps. This is my, my boy Lene. He helped me start this site up. And I used to go to this school in 2008. Back when it was on 34th Street. You guys, you guys have it good, because this over right here, nice. Nice. What was it like back then, though? Was it like like the thing? foam, like you know how you guys have the, the, the what was it called, the fibrillators or whatever for the, for the kick drums and stuff? The, it used to be just like a foam brick. It wasn't, it didn't look nice, as nice as that, but. The only school in there? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's true. And like, I don't know if this still have, I don't know if that's the same Neve, but I love that Neve book. Yeah. It's Valley, it's And it's we finally got here. I did. Uh, Sorry for being late. Okay. I was playing some of your records today. Okay. okay. While you were away. Okay. okay. So what do you want Which to ones? <sighs> I played some Tessio, played some J stuff, Fabulous, okay. Delta. Did you play any Rory stuff? I have Rory stuff. I just wanted to. That's where I was, by the way. Do any of you guys know Rory? Yeah. He's like a new, really dope. So he had a show out in Brooklyn. Um, I mixed his EP and we're working on the record now. Uh, so we were just sort of talking about what we're going to do for the album, what it's going to sound like. And, you know, so I had to wait till the show was done so we could we could vibe for a bit. So, so let's talk about, a little bit about your past. Let's go over to you. Okay. Toronto. Yeah. Is that, is that where you're from? Absolutely, yeah. Born so, race. When, when did you first come in contact with music? Um, it was early. I think I played. I played violin in uh, fifth grade. That was the first instrument I played, and then. Um, Do you still not play violin? Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was not. I didn't say I was good. I just said I played. Uh, then I played uh, trumpet for a few years. Didn't really enjoy that either. Um, I played bass guitar for a few years. I actually got pretty good at bass. Um, and then I started DJing a few years after that. So it was sort of an evolution between instruments. And um, once I started DJing, that opened up production. And that's how I got into this world. Uh, DJing, I would say, was the what started it. How did the name DJ Swivel come about? There's no interesting story. Just yeah. I was. I was. 14 or 15 years old and, and I was blessed with a supportive mother who didn't tell me to go be a lawyer, uh, even though I love to argue and everybody said I should have been a lawyer. Um, she just said, do what you want. And, and so I, I got this internship and there was three of us at the studio. It was Duro, his assistant, and myself. And I was basically taking the trash out, going on runs for artists. They would need a sandwich or whatever they want. Um, and then a few months after that, his assistant took a job with uh, Corey Rooney, uh, and I sort of inherited the assistant position, but we didn't hire really an intern to go below me, so I was sort of interning and assisting at the same time. Uh, so I'd be in on his sessions, and I worked with like Puff, and I mean, everybody came through. I remember my first day. Uh, what was the first, do you remember the first session? The first session was a, a Fabulous and Styles P session, uh, it was the remix for Mariah, uh, Clue produced the remix for Mariah on the Emancipation record, uh, We Belong Together remix, I think. And the fir my first day, uh, Fab and Styles B came in and, and, and cut that. So, and what um, was your impression of basically? I wasn't in the process? room, I just, they came in and I was out in the lounge cleaning up. Basically, that, that I mean, literally, that was that was what it was. And then, uh, so how did the transition come from like pretty big artists like Fab yeah. to major artists like Beyonce and things like that? That's just being in the room, and um, I the way that that worked is Omar Grant, who's now an AR at Rock Nation. He's like Rihanna's AR. Uh, he was working at I think it was EMI at the time in publishing. Uh, he was friends with Lenny S, who was Fab's A&R, uh, and they would always be around. Uh, and you know, I knew his his you know his girlfriend at the time. Like we just knew each other, and he was around. And um, he used to work with Destiny's Child on the road or something. So I guess uh, she need, she needed a fill in for the day, and and um, she somebody on her team reached out to him. Do you know somebody we could use in New York for the day? And uh, he reached out to me, and I was available. 
Uh, so I went in, and, and then she kept bringing me back. <laughs> yeah, we've been interviewing a lot of engineers, and like Basie Bob, you know, and Chris Garinger. Very good friend of mine. I, I actually reached out to him when because I saw his podcast. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, like, you know, they ask interesting questions. Like, definitely go, you yeah. do it. So like, Chris, Chris was telling us like he gets a lot of work sent to him. Is that like the new thing? Like all engineers just getting work sent to them, or do you think the yeah. sessions are better? No, no, no I, I, absolutely. It, it, the in the last. Definitely in the last year, or sorry, um, <coughs> most sessions that I'm mixing, um, a lot of it I'm doing at home. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to spend two grand a day on a studio, spend two days mixing a record. Uh, most budgets aren't really there for that. For someone like B, of course it is, but uh, for everyone else, um, you have to cut costs. It's just the nature of the... the uh, so, so I've had, um, there's a few that I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, Fab, we did a 67 hour session. Uh, now, he did leave for periods of like three hours where I would get like a one hour nap. But I didn't leave the studio for 67 hours. This was at Sony Studios when it was still open. Um, I was showering at the studio. Wow. Uh, yeah, I lived there for, and I had no idea. The only reason we left is it was Thanksgiving, the day that we left. Uh, <laughs> tips. I mean, for me, everyone sort of finds their own way and has a different path on how they get to where they're going. For me, what I found to be um, the most valuable asset to me was just working for free uh, and never complaining about it, never asking about money, sort of waiting for that. Like, people see the work that you're putting in. Um, and eventually, you know, that, that hard work will, will pay off. So, I mean, I think it would be really evil for somebody to have you work a year unpaid and then, like, get rid of you as soon as you, you know? So, for me, it was, how do I be as valuable as I can? And I knew that with the money that I had, and, you know, I had a little support from my mom, uh, I could get through a year in New York, uh, without having to make a dime. Uh, my expenses were, like I said, they were low and, and, and I, that's sort of how I worked it out. So I said, I'm going to work for free until something happens. And there was always like little gigs that would pop up. Um, I remember this producer, Chink Santana, I don't know if any of you guys know him, but he produced like some Ashanti records and like big records. Yeah. Uh, he was like super generous with me. I remember he gave me like $600 one day in cash. And I had like never seen I mean, I had seen $600 before, but, yeah. you know, it was the first money that I made, like, real money that I made doing what I loved that wasn't working at McDonald's, which I did when I was in high school. So best to be around at all times. Because when you're around and somebody else isn't, maybe they need an extra person. Maybe you're assisting and B's in the room or J's in the room and they have a writer coming in and they need you to work on you know, something in the other room with, with a producer or whatever. Um, but they only have one engineer there. Who's, who else can do it? You're the person there, so you're gonna step up. Uh, and that's how you might get your first credit. And that might turn into more and more. And then the owner of the studio says, oh wow, you know, I didn't know that they were gonna be on this, and but they did it and they did well, and you know, let's put them on more sessions. So, uh, be as valuable as you can, is what I would say. Um, so, my question, um, so like I know you spend a lot of hours in the studio, mm -hmm. like for example, at 67, and like, I just want to know, like, how does your health come into play? Like, are you a vegan? Like, you mean, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not a vegan. Uh, no, but that's actually a really good that's question, good question because it does take a toll on your body. I mean, you know, you need the next day to recover, and, and um, I remember when we did the Beyonce session, it was 36 hours, uh, and she sang like six songs. Uh, we were like shooting five-hour energies every five hours, probably. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I didn't read the label. You're only supposed to have one of those every 24 hours or two at the most. <laughs> yeah, don't even start. I, ha I must have had five or six, and... Um, I paid for it the next day. I, I, I was actually like violently ill. Uh, once she left, 
Uh, the next day I had off, I'm feeling okay. Uh, I went to a party, uh, Third party not, not like a club or anything, I wasn't <laughs> drinking, I wasn't, you know, it was just like a, it was actually uh, like a, a family gathering, if you will, not my family, but a close friend of mine. Yeah. And um, yeah, at around 11 o'clock I wasn't feeling so hot, and I was just like, oh, I gotta go. This was in Jersey, so I took a cab home, and uh, I got home, and, and I had like these violent shakes and I was freezing cold and sweating like it was not good at all. Yeah, we're gonna end it off with a quote. Do you have a quote for the people? Uh, what did I just? I'm gonna cheat. I just posted this on Instagram and I post. I normally don't post these inspirational quotes because uh, sometimes I think it's uh, corny. But uh, this one sort of resonated with me. Uh, hold on. I'm just gonna read it back. I'm gonna pull this phone. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up my phone. And there's a new iPhone 6, people. <laughs> I'm sure every half the people in this room have a uh, It says, uh, decide what it is you want, write that shit down, make a fucking plan, and work on it every single day. Nice. And that's, that really, uh, it, get, it's, it gets straight to the point of, of what this is about. This, the business is so, it's a difficult business to be in. Uh, you're gonna run into a lot of people who you don't like. Uh, you're gonna hear no more times than you probably would like. Um, and for every hundred times you hear no, you may only hear one yes. So you need really thick skin. You have to be sure of what you're doing. You have to keep working on it, keep getting better. Um, you know, this business is not for the faint of heart, but if you can get past that, persistence will pay off, always. Because eventually all the people who weren't any good will quit and go get regular jobs and you'll still be there. So, um, so yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you guys. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deformalities, deformalities.com. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you? Gifts? Gifts? Did I bring any gifts? Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs>